Okay, so in this lecture, we will see how the principle of linear superposition can be used to, you know, st string together, you know, rather complicated stuff which uh, which can appear on the right hand side of our differential equation, right? So we have the, you know, stuff which we call the homogeneous, uh, the stuff which goes to form the homogeneous equation which appears on the left hand side, and then if it is equal to some function of the uh, of the independent variable on the right hand side, then it's a uh, it's an inhomogeneous differential equation, right? So, but we in this lecture we will see how the, the linear superposition principle can be invoked to work out the particular solution for rather complicated kinds of drives which can be applied on the right hand side. Okay, so this the pr principle of superposition is just that you know you have linear systems here, so therefore you can just you know, take the solution of one external drive and the solution of another external drive and just add the two, that's going to be a particular solution for the sum of these two uh, drives, right? So, uh, so in fact, you can have as many different terms as you want on the right-hand side. So, it's a linear problem, therefore, you can just add all of them and you'll get a particular solution for the full problem. So, since we have, you know, we have laid down a prescription for obtaining particular solutions for, you know, a, a whole class of, uh, you know, inhomogeneous terms, we can add, you know, all of these kinds of different kinds of inhomogeneous terms on the right hand side and still work out a particular solution, right. So, working out of the particular solution itself is, is usually the hard problem. So, the, the homogeneous part we know how to do, right. So, okay. So, well, I mean, we have seen other ways of getting getting to it. Suppose you have, uh, you know, the variation of parameter and so on. But this is uh, this is another approach, right? So you will see that uh, depending upon the situation, you know, one technique may be better or another one. Okay. So here, let's look at an example, right? We have probably uh, tried out similar problems in the past, but let's look at one example here, which is. Uh, you know, d squared y by dx squared plus dy by dx minus 2, 2y two on the left hand side. And this is equal to e to the x plus x squared minus x on the right hand side. So, the right hand side is a little more complicated. So, the first step of course is to rewrite the left hand side, you know, factorize it and rewrite it as d plus 2 times d minus 1 acting on y is equal to e to the x plus x squared minus x. The right hand side appears as it is. So, there is this you know, the linear operator acts on y to give you this complicated, you know, uh, external drive on the right hand side. So, the complementary function is of course very straightforward, it is just simply c1 times e to the x plus c2 times e to the minus 2x. Now, to find a particular solution, we must look for a linear combination of the particular solutions of each of the terms on the right hand side, right. So, we can directly make an answer. So either you can start and say, okay, let me first work out the solution for just e to the x, then work out for just x squared, then work out for minus x and then add them all. Or you can use this knowledge to directly make an onsorts of this kind. Y p is equal to a times x times e to the x. So, why do we need a times x to the times e x? Because you, you see that e to the x is a, is part of the complementary function. So, you cannot just use e to the x here on the right hand side. So, you must try x times e to the x. So, let us look at a times x times e to the x plus, plus a quadratic function, right, that is the rule. So, we must put in b x squared plus c x plus d. We do not know b c d, we do not know a, we need to find it. This is the method of undetermined coefficients. So, we differentiate. So, you get a x, a e to the x plus a x e to the x plus 2 b x plus c, differentiate again, you get 2 a e to the x plus a x e to the x plus to b. Now, we plug back into the original differential equation and then, you know, collect all these terms carefully. So, the left hand side, so, uh, so, so you collect terms corresponding to e to the x. So, of course, you can ch check that immediately x times e to the x will vanish. So, you have uh, a x e to the x plus a x e to the x minus 2 a x e to the x. So, that is anyway gone. e to the x, the coefficient is just 3 a. So, that must be equal to 1 and the coefficient corresponding to x squared is 1 on the right hand side, but it is minus 2b on the left hand side. So, minus 2b should be equal to 1. Coefficient corresponding to uh, 
x is minus 1 on the right hand side and on the left hand side is 2b minus 2c that should be equated coefficient corresponding to the constant part is just 0 on the right hand side so 2b plus c minus 2d must be equal to 0 right so we just solve these you know four different four equations in four unknowns it's very straightforward because two of them already solved and then you just substitute and then you get a equal to one third b equal to minus a half c equal to zero d equal to minus half and then you get this particular solution which you must take this final particular solution and directly apply the linear operator on it and check that indeed you have got the right particular solution right because there are possibilities of making mistakes but it's all it's always best to cross check that indeed you have got a particular solution so it doesn't matter how you get a particular solution any particular solution is is good enough you just tag it along with the complementary function and you're done so that's we have implied we have applied this linear superposition principle so in fact this linear superposition principle can be stretched so instead of just one term or two terms or ten terms on the right hand side you can actually have an infinite series sitting on the right hand side so the kind of infinite series that we are familiar with is uh, Fourier series right so special kind of infinite series and so let's look at an example where we have a Fourier series on the right hand side so suppose you have you know this is the standard harmonic oscillator style problem d squared y by dt squared plus y but you're driving the system with a square wave of this kind so f of t is 1 for an interval from 0 to pi and then it goes to 0 then again it becomes 1 and then again it, it goes to 0 and so on right and with a time period of 2 pi so now if we expand this right hand side so the way to solve this type of a problem is to expand the right hand side in a Fourier series and then use linear superposition principle so this is a Fourier series that we have already done we have expanded so you're going to get a bunch of signs right so uh, you can check this you can you could have worked this out in a Fourier sign series but uh, it's convenient to work out the exponential series so let's write down the exponential series so you you can verify that indeed you get f of t is equal to half plus 1 over i pi uh, I mean it's basically the sine series and then there is this constant right it's it's not exactly just the sine series so there is a it's like a shift which has happened so it's half plus 1 over i pi times you know this is a factor that we have, has been pulled out then you have e to the i t minus e to the minus i t by 1 so that's like sine t by 1 then you have sine t 3 t by 3 then sine phi t by phi so on so you get e to the 3 i t minus e to the minus 3 i t by 3 I mean I have to make use of this i and also some factor of 2 must be adjusted if you want to write it in terms of sines right which is an equivalent version so I, it's convenient to write this as half plus summation over k going from minus infinity to plus infinity where k is odd and it's e to the i k t divided by I k pi right so k can take negative values and positive values but not any e1 ones okay so the particular solution corresponding to this constant so how do we solve this problem so you say okay uh, d squared y by d squared dt squared plus y is equal to half solve it you get one solution then you have d squared y by dt squared plus you know the first term on this side only on the right hand side then solve for it and so on right so the particular solution corresponding to half is very easy it's just half if you choose yp equal to half then d squared y by dt squared will just kill it and so y is equal to half so there's no problem so it's just half now there is this one term which we have to work out separately so this is in fact what is happening is we have chosen to drive our system here at resonance in some sense because the frequency of you know the the drive is the same as the natural frequency of this problem so I you know constructed it in such a way that you know I can show you that one has to be careful and to see that you know instead of driving uh, such a system with a cosine drive which we have seen in the past it's also possible to drive it with a square wave and in fact here the square wave turns out to be a, a rather messy object to work with it's much more convenient to get the physics out if we you know applied a sine wave or a cosine wave but here the point is to illustrate how we can work with a sine wave uh, with a uh, you know an arbitrary periodic function and then expand it in a Fourier series and then work out the solution the particular solution term by term right so since that is our goal sine uh, a, a, a square wave is a particularly uh, instructive 
type of drive to consider and also to consider it such that it is its frequency matches with the natural frequency so now because the frequency matches i cannot blindly uh, you know just use e to the i t minus e to the minus i t so i should solve this for first term alone separately as you will see in a moment the solution for the other parts are uh, you know can be written down in one shot so let me solve this out so i have d squared y by dt squared plus y is equal to 2 by pi sin of t so i cannot blindly put you know a, a, a particular solution of the of the kind sin of t because that's going to be part of the complementary solution so but on the other hand i should try something like t times sin t or you know t times cosine t a linear combination of both of these that's what i should try and so in fact i did this and i check that in fact the particular solution for this is just minus t cosine of t by pi as you can directly verify by you know just plug this in here into this differential equation and, and verify that indeed you know if you do d squared by dt squared plus 1 if you act upon this then it should just give you 2 by pi sine of t so this is a particular solution for this problem now to work out the particular solution for the other terms we should just solve for this kind of a problem d squared y by dt squared plus y is equal to e to the i kt divided by i k pi so this is the generic term now if i do this so the onsorts that i'll have to make is ck times e to the i kt so now i get minus k squared plus 1 times ck e to the i kt is equal to e to the i kt divided by i k pi so ck is equal to 1 over i k pi times 1 minus k squared so now you see the difficulty we would have run into if we had put k equal to 1 or k equal to my, uh, minus 1 as well right so that's why the first time i have treated it separately and otherwise it's going to give me terms of this kind so the overall particular solution becomes you know the sum of the particular solutions of all of these so i have yp of t is equal to half minus 1 over pi t times cosine of t minus 1 over i pi uh, e to the 3 i t minus e to the minus 3 i t divided by you know i have to take into account this 1 minus k squared so which is uh, you know 3 comes because of uh, uh, k and 1 minus k squared will give me 8 and then i have a 5 which comes in here 5 squared minus 1 to the 24 and so on right so there's an overall minus sign so of course the bookkeeping is somewhat messy but the point is the principle involved here right so here we see that using the superposition principle we can work out term by term a particular solution for each of the terms which appears on the right hand side just add them all up and we get the particular solution for the full problem so once again we note that this solution is also going to get dominated by this term t cosine t because you are driving your system at resonance so everything else will you know which has an oscillatory uh, behavior but this has this linear behavior as a function of time so everything else will get suppressed or will be less important compared to this and then you get this t cosine of t you can plot this function and verify for yourself that indeed you know resonance leads to like very very large amplitudes being achieved for you know even relatively small times and definitely for large times and so in general when you drive your system at resonance you know it, it, something very dramatic is going to happen so very very likely you're going to just completely destroy the system if it's going to break down at some point right but that breakdown is something sometimes is a you know a, a desirable kind of breakdown which you want and so in such applications you know systems need to be run resonantly then there are other scenarios where uh, the goal is to avoid resonance but the main message from this lecture is that using this the principle of superposition we can work out the particular solution and therefore the full general solution for differential equations involving you know for forcing terms which which are rather complicated which which involve you know some of many objects sometimes the sum can be an infinite series as well thank you mm -hmm.